So let's look at the question. Is affinity hard to use? And it's a good question. So let's look at affinity photo first. It's by far the most popular and a strong contender for the position held by Photoshop. Whilst many enthusiastic affinity photo users may tell you that it's easier to learn than Photoshop, I would say it's probably similar in difficulty. But if you know Photoshop already, it may speed up your learning, but also leave you a little frustrated at times. That said, without this initial Photoshop knowledge, I'd probably have experienced a similar steep learning curve as I did with Photoshop. While some people watching this video may say I don't find Affinity Photo confusing, I suspect many will, at least initially. There are two reasons for this. Much of Affinity Photo mirrors the design of Photoshop. And let's face it, Photoshop isn't renowned for being easy to use. Just let me find something here. Trees in the stock images. There we go. Trees, drag it over, place it on the thing. And there's a picture of trees. The design of Affinity Photo has some quirks that make it extremely flexible, but this can also make it confusing. Let's look at this second point in more detail, and I'll give you some examples. In most software editing packages, you do everything in one screen, with dialogues opening to reveal additional features. In Affinity Photo, you have personas, which are a way of grouping together tools and features with a similar purpose. You can access these per personas using the icons, icons in the top left of the Affinity Photo toolbar, as shown here. Here's the main persona the photo persona which is the main one that's the one you're using here you can move things around you can drag and drop you can bring things in from the studio the next one over here is the liquify persona now we've got a liquify circle there we can make that circle even bigger because what I want to do is Drag all of those trees across like that. You can see that that's done that one. Okay, that's as easy as that. Do we want to apply it? No, let's just cancel that. And it's back to where it was. The other one that you'll use a lot is used is the, the develop persona. This one's mostly usable for raw files. Let's change the exposure of that image. There we go. The exposure has been dropped. Very little exposure. Bring up the brightness. So you can modify images. There's lots of things. Enhance, colors, white balance, shadows and highlights, profiles. It's as simple as that. What's that one there? Tone mapping. If you've got a please either commit or cancel a develop operation, so I can't move on, so I'll cancel it and cancel that there. We don't want to develop that. That's back to the way it was. Okay, as we we're saying, the liquify persona. This is tools to help you stretch and deform images, and it's probably most useful for retouching portraits and fashion work. The develop persona we just looked at. This is a little like the develop module in Lightroom and is the default persona when editing raw files, but you can use it on ordinary film. In fact, this is the only persona where you can edit the raw file, and so Affinity automatically switches it to this when you open one. Now the tone mapping persona, which we just looked at around here, used for HDR photography and manipulating 32-bit images. So if you're really seriously into photography, you'll know about that. The export persona, which is the last one, contains 
tools to help you export images or portions of an image. It's probably most useful if you're involved in activities, activities like graphic design and website layout. Let's have a quick look at that. And that goes over there. You can see on the right hand side, make a selection, defaults, mode. So we've got our selection here. We could just export that. You see, slice one. So you can take slices and you can make slices depending on grid layouts. So if you've got a really big image, you can reduce it to slices and print it out on A4 pages or something like that. Now we don't want to bother with that anymore, so let's just go back to the default persona, which is over there. They have slightly different layouts and tools, although you'll find some elements in other personas. In other words, each persona is specific, but there are some things in it that are particular to that persona, of course. The good news is that you don't need to use these personas. It's only the photo persona that's essential for just general day-to-day -day work. Unless you're going to edit raw files, in which case you also need the develop persona. As mentioned, the layout of the different affinity personas, getting tongue-tied there, often confuses new users. When you switch between personas, you often see different arrangements of tools. Some of these tools may be unique to a persona, whilst you'll find others in multiple personas, as I just mentioned before. What makes the layout of Affinity Photo so flexible, and at the same time confusing if you like, are the studio areas and studio panels. The studio areas are invisible areas on the left and right of the interface. You only realise they're there when studio panels are docked into them. The panels tend to display information, there's your colour panels, there's the stock panel, lots of photos available from Pixabay and Pexels. The brushes panel, you, there's lots of different brushes there, lots and lots and lots of different brushes. Let's click out of that. Different channels, you can alter the colour channels, you can alter the layers, and if you really want to get technical up here, it's all there in the top gadget there. Add presets, show left studio, navigator, metro. Okay, let's not continue with that because I'm not showing you how to use it here, but rather where it all is. So the studio panels themselves, as I mentioned, tend to group tools and display information, for example, the histogram. Now that you know some of the tricky areas which can make learning Affinity Photo difficult, let's look at a few ways you may want to use when learning the software. Before trying to learn Affinity Photo, if you don't already own the software, you should download a trial version. You can do that from Serif. Don't go third party because you never know what you're getting. There's a free trial version at AffinitySerif.com itself and you can download from there. When I originally wrote this article, the trial period was only 10 days, although I think it's gone out from that now. Although this does change, as I say, from time to time. Like all good software, it updates regularly. Okay, now we've got the second app in the trilogy, Affinity Designer. Now the company is taking on the graphics software market for Mac, and it's available for around $50 US. Affinity Designer could be easily dismissed as another cheap graphics program aimed at amateurs but it was created specifically for professional designers accustomed to working in a Mac environment. The same image. With the ability to edit and create pixel layers, Affinity Designer ostensibly functions as an Illustrator Photoshop hybrid. But could it be an attractive alternative to designers who work frequently in both programs? Hmm. Does Affinity Design often enough, offer enough features to sway long-term Adobe users? Or is it better suited to beginners? So if you want to start learning how to make your own illustrations and you choose Adobe Illustrator, you could be locked into paying around $31 every month. Forever! Well, no, actually, not forever, because they'll raise their prices, so it'll be even more expensive than that over time. So you opt for Affinity. 
you do still need to buy a license for each type of operating system you use Affinity Designer on, or you can even buy a universal license that covers all three for all the apps. But even if you have to buy every version of Affinity Designer for the Windows, Mac and iPad, you don't have to endlessly pay a subscription fee. So you'll still come out ahead. A one-off cost that's very low. So that's one thing people often worry about. The cost. Shut that down again. Let's have a look at what we've got going here. Now you can see it's the same type of layout. You've got the studios over here. Glyph browsers, colours, swatches, stroke, appearance, some more panels here, brushes and layers. They're the layers that your work is on. Quick effects, outlines, different styles that you can apply globally. And even down here, there's even more of those. Everything you need to keep track of what you're doing on your document. There's a, a pen tool. You'd use that for drawing. You can see what it that brings out all the little strokes there. Place a dot there and a dot there. And there's a line across there. And it's developed another layer. Too nice. Okay. I also totally get why you might be worried about its ease of use. Have you ever tried using Inkscape? It's a free open source alternative to Adobe Illustrator. And when I went looking for Illustrator alternatives, I started there. Inkscape was a frustrating nightmare. So I was sceptical that Affinity Designer would be much better. I've never been more happy to be proven wrong. If you're worried about the learning curve for digital illustration software, then you'll be pleased to know that I find Affinity Designer significantly easier to use than Illustrator and a million times easier than Inkscape. Compared to Illustrator, Affinity Designer has a much more user-friendly setup that will be easy for beginners to learn. For new designers and old pros alike, Affinity Designer offers a modern intuitive interface that allows users to transition almost seamlessly between it and Illustrator. Budding designers will find all the necessary tools clearly organised and accessible down the left hand side there and the default toolbars and keyboard shortcuts will feel familiar to Adobe users. The learning curve is more like a gentle slope for designers experienced in Illustrator or Photoshop. In terms of function and style, Affinity Designer is an impressive low budget alternative to Adobe Illustrator. It's suitably simple for beginners to use as a learning tool, but sufficiently powerful for freelance graphic artists on a budget. Okay, maybe I want to do a square in here. Let's get colours up. There's our colours. There's our panel. And you can see I've got a gradient in there. So let's see what happens if I draw out a square. There's a square with a gradient colour. Here's another square with a gradient colour. Let's go find a circle. There's another circle with an inbuilt gradient in it. But I don't want the gradient anymore. I'm more concerned with the stroke on the outside. There's our stroke panel. No, stock, sorry. Can't read, it's too small. Colour, swatches, stroke. There we go. X make the width of the stroke. And you can see the, the outline of that stroke there. We've now got a heavy black board around that. Now, can I do anything with that? Well, they're nodes. So I can make that I can change the shape of that. Now I don't want to get into all of this stuff. There's a there's a heart. Let's see if we now there we've got a heart with a nice big black border. And see how it's remembered everything I was doing? How easy is that? Now the third app in the trilogy is Publisher. So let's close down this. I don't want to save everything because that'll just make a big mess of it. There's Publisher. 
that will bounce away there. Now, as I mentioned, I've got a fairly slow computer here, so it will take just a moment for Publisher to come up. Still bouncing away there. There we go. Affinity Publisher 2, 203. It's coming up. When reviewing Affinity Publisher and Serif's Affinity Suite in general, it's easier to talk about these apps merely in terms of them being viable alternatives to Adobe software. Yes, Adobe's been around for an eon in time. Serif much less so, but nowadays Serif's three offerings, Affinity Photo, Designer and Publisher, are considered very powerful tools in their own right. Now let me pause here a moment while I open up a previous document. Open recent document. And you can see you can even bring up the original document. Probably not a good example for publisher. Let me bring up a different example. Open. Do, do, do. Here we go. Affinity Publisher. I need Dropbox. I need Affinity Publisher. And there's a heap of documents. Where's a book I've got in here? Paperback template? Okay. Let's just open that one. Doesn't matter what it is. Now that will come up as it opens from Dropbox, which is where I've got everything stored. And there you can see master pages and the pages of the document. That's too easy. Another thing worth repeating, and I'll leave it there soon after, is Affinity's wide compatibility meaning you don't need the latest software to keep it performing smoothly. You can run the Affinity apps on Mac 10.9 or later, and even Windows 7. In fact, Affinity Publisher, like Designer and Photo, are capable of, capable of dealing with vast documents whilst rendering with continued fluidity. Working on a slightly older Mac has meant that Adobe is just a non-go area for me, it's as slow as molasses, and I don't want to use it anymore anyway. And frequently, just doesn't work. With all that in mind, let's move on and take a look at what Affinity Publisher has to offer either the professional or beginner desktop publisher. Anyone familiar with desktop publishing should feel right at home here. A clean and very navigable user interface means that even if you're new to tools like this, you'll get to grips with Publisher in no time. The sheer number of Affinity video tutorials will promptly guide you. The videos, as a side note, are mostly made by the Serif team themselves or people like me who have YouTube channels. Who it should be said are nearly all designers themselves. Makes you feel you're in good hands. Now just a moment, I'll just digress here because what I want to see if I can find is an Affinity Publisher document that's actually a cover. A cover, cover, poster template, mugs, books about books, Affinity Publisher. It's a trifold brochure. Wine bottles, KDP, Sudoku, Line Journal. There's a cover for uh, it's just notifying me that it's a legacy document. It was originally designed. Now you see how easy that is. Look at that. You can do graphics and everything on that. That's the cover for a little children's book. The Very Clever Lizard. Okay. 
You have your usual suspects to the left of the user interface in terms of tools and a context toolbar, which is up the top there. Your main adjustments to the right, right of the page, plus the ability to add, hide, move and place a host of other adjustment panels via the studio menu right at the top. Window, studio menu and you can do all sorts of things there. The most interesting element and inclusion here is the top left hand corner where there are three app icons. If you have those apps, then you don't need to switch out um, to another program. We don't want the node tool, we want that tool. We want to select that item there, which is that one there. Now, we can go to Designer. And we're now working in Designer and I can change that. Or if it's in photo and I want to alter a photo, I can now go to photo and we're in Affinity Photo and we can alter that back there. This studio link means you can switch what in Affinity are known as personas. It basically means you can change apps with the click of a button. You can be working on an image in either photo or designer, then switch back to publisher, all within the same interface. It certainly reduces the time in having to open up other separate apps to make adjustments or edits. And needless to say, it's great for workflow. Now, the price of Affinity Publisher is very tempting indeed. And as I say, you can get it as part of the universal license, which is really a one-off, quite cheap price. So it's worth keeping an eye out. A 30-day free trial should be plenty to get to grips with it especially considering the amount of great video tutorials out there. A free trial will also give you the opportunity to download all three Affinity apps and play around with switching between personas, which is a unique feature and a great time saver. So for someone looking for design and publishing software for the first time, then you should definitely invest. If you're switching from Adobe, then if the idea of being subscriptionless hasn't already made up your mind, then the idea of having three apps as an uncluttered and easily navigable package, all working quickly and in unison, should do it. Serif Affinity Publisher is a very complete toolbox for design and publishing that runs smoothly and is easy to get to grips with. It's both smart and responsive and should be a serious consideration for anyone looking for software of this type, even if you're used to other programs. In summary, the Affinity apps are easier to use for beginners and professionals alike than other high-end apps in the same class. Each has a learning curve, of course, but in answer to the question, is Affinity hard to use? The answer is an emphatic no. Okay, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and ring the bell for... Um, future notifications when I next put up another video. Thanks for watching.